Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. So we're going to start a pastel course, and I'm going to tell you how to do everything. In addition to painting, I think we have 18 pets to paint. So I'm going to paint all of those live on air for you to see, upload it to the YouTube channel. Uh, you get to see every stroke, every piece of pastel I put on the paper. Great news. So for now, let's talk about color theory and let's talk about how to do colors in pets. All right, so I have a lot of good news actually in this realm because if you go to Google Images, if you go to a pet park, uh, if you go anywhere where you have a lot of dogs and cats, you're going to see that there's not a lot of color variation in those pets. It's just not there. Of course, you're going to have outliers. Let's say someone has a pet toucan, uh, you know, with a big green beak or something like that. But I mean, for the most part, you're only looking at four to five different colors. Uh, and let's go through those real quick. So before we do that, let's go to Google Images and search for dog, for example. And as you can see, you have a lot of this tan, kind of a desaturated yellowish brown. And I call that butterscotch, named after the great American pastel color. And you'll notice that you have obviously black, white, the grays, um, and then you have this saturated brown, which is normally burnt sienna or a variation. And then you have the dark brown, which is the, the desaturated brown. So you can see from this picture, and same thing if you go search for cats, and you can search for dog paintings, and you can sort of see the same thing. I mean, you have a, a pattern here of four, five, six colors, and that's it. So let's review those colors. All right, for the first color I want to do is Burnt Sienna. And Burnt Sienna is extremely popular. You can get this with acrylic, um, watercolor. You can get this any old way you want. And oil paint as well, and pastels too. So you notice this Burnt Sienna is a dry pigment, so it doesn't have that reflection that you usually get with a Burnt Sienna. So let's go look at a Burnt Sienna, um, just a random Burnt Sienna paint off uh, Google Images. And you can see, if there's a lot of reflection coming from the the liquid of that and the reflection off of that but if you come back here to pastels you really don't have that sheen that shine and pastel since it's a dry pigment you're also going to have an issue with the old acrylic or oil painting trick to where you can add some gloss and I can have like acrylic, I can add a little gloss to uh, a dog's eye, for example, make it just kind of pop a little bit, or a Christmas tree ornament, or glass. So you can add sheen to that, that you can't really do in pastel. Now, Great America does have a few pastels, not Burnt Cena or any of these, that has like sort of a glittery effect inside of it, and that's part of their metallic line. But for the most part, you're not really gonna get that effect. So the first color you're going to see a lot of is, well, actually your main color that you're going to see is black, white, gray, and butterscotch. Now butterscotch, my butterscotch theory is once you have butterscotch, and this is a brownish tan, so a lot of brownish tan, yellowish, desaturated color, once you have this, this is actually most of a pet. I mean, you look at this dog I did here, I mean, it's all butterscotch. Look at this dog. It's almost all butterscotch. And you can go through my history of paintings and you'll see just tons and tons of this butterscotch color. So if you have butterscotch, I mean, you're almost half set, right? Next comes the grays. And this is sort of a not quite black, but it's getting there. So the Mount Vision so butterscotch is a great American pastel color. This is Mount Vision, and you can see the size difference. These are huge. This is the Mount Vision 450 line, and it goes 450, which is your pure pigment, right? 451, they add a little bit of white. 452, 453, 454, and it goes all the way to 461. So there's 11 gradations, starting from dark, dark gray, all the way into almost white. So it's a nice, it's a nice um, range of colors that will get you where you need to be on your pet. 
I just did a pet with a marble table that he was kind of propped up against the marble table and on there I used 450 451 and uh, 455 I think so I used three and it looks realistic I just went over with a pencil after to give it the detail but it looks realistic you could do a lot with just a, a good range of grays so now let's talk about the burnt sienna so this is probably the next most popular color you're gonna see on pets especially dogs of course you don't really see a lot of burnt sienna cats right um, so a lot of dogs will have this this highly saturated brownish red it's almost trending towards orange if you look at uh, Rembrandt their burnt sienna equivalent it actually says orange on it I mean this is really trending towards orange and this is going to be a valuable color as well because as you can tell if you look at the burnt sienna line as you as they add more white to this okay you'll look at this it's kind of trending a little bit towards butterscotch I mean not a lot but you're kind of getting there and then as you get butterscotch lighter and lighter you can go into the burnt sienna so you can get a nice mix so the last color other than black and white I want to talk about is dark brown so this is a desaturated brown and dark brown lives up to its name I mean you have almost black here if you look at this compared to the gray it looks really similar but when you put this down on the paper and for your base coats it's nice and soft it goes on the paper you get that really really dark brown color it really pops so this is a desaturated brown so now when I say desaturated let's look at the color wheel real quick I'm gonna bore you with a lot of color theory can you tell I left the color wheel on the table while I was cutting my, my papers so if you get a color and you go to the complementary color in other words red and you scoot across here to the opposite side green as you add a little bit of green to your red it desaturates in other words you have this bright bright fire truck red here and then as you add a little green you get like less red less red less red and it trends towards gray actually in the middle so that's what I mean by desaturated you you have not as much pure color but they've just toned it down a bit and this is perfect especially look right like right here and these these are really trending towards grays but with a brownish tint just a little bit of a brownish tint so the so the next color that we're going to use for the base coats and the final color is going to be white and black so art spectrum has an ap non-toxic warm white they have a cool white they have gradations of the warm white and the good thing about art spectrum is they're cheap um, when you're going into the white black and you really don't need a lot of color uh, it's okay to go a little cheaper but if you're doing base coats and you're going to do pure color you need the most high quality pastel that you can afford basically um, and then you have black so this one here is 513 Giro pastel and I'll put that on the screen so 513 is actually a dark green and what I like about it is it is pitch black when you put this on the paper I mean it just pops I can sit here with my pastel pencil and do black all day and it's not going to ever approach the darkness that I get from 513 Giro Pastel. Highly recommend if you only buy one, 513 is your man. That's what you want. So now in addition, now that you have your base coats done and you use your soft pastels, you need a couple of pencils. What I would buy, recommend, is something like this. And this is because with pastel pencils, these are colored pencils, but you need a pastel pencil set or just a little set. And the reason for that is you need like let's say the dog has a blue collar right or you need to make some grass in the background or uh, you need a pink for example uh, a pinkish red for the tongue you have a lot of dog pictures where the tongue is hanging out so you need like a dark red for the the back of the tongue trending towards brown I would do brown dark red just kind of glaze it and then as you trend towards the front of the tongue where more light is hitting it I would go with like a pink so I would go dark red middle ground and a pink and these are carbothello pencils and good news carbothello pencils are only like a dollar 
So this is like a darker red. Um, this is 310. And this one is 311. I'll see a trend. 325. So you have the dark 325. Then you have these other colors for the tongue. And I would buy specific colors, dark red to pink for the tongue. And that's all I would get as far as these are concerned. Don't stock up. Don't buy a hundred pastels. There's just no reason. The next thing I would buy is a brown, a dark brown and a mid brown. Again, I would go to Carbothello. They're only a dollar. And let's say for this dark brown, looking at five or sorry, six twenty-five. And then this is a pit pastel. This is one eighty. This is another brown. So, but just get. I mean, you can look online and you want a dark brown and a middle of the middle of the road brown, right? Uh, then next I would get a tan. You're going to get a lot of tan. And the tan sort of matches like a, a dark butterscotch color. Uh, and this is 685. 685 Carbothello pencils. You get a dollar. And finally, white black. Um, I would stick with Carbothello and just get white black. It's really all you need, man. It's really all you need. And then you're set. And this whole set plus paper is relatively cheap. So let's talk about base coats. Um, if you go to, I go to Blick, so dickblick.com, Blick Art Materials is where I buy most of my stuff. Um, you can get it fairly cheap. They have free shipping if you order over $59 or whatever. So I would just get this set and you're, and you're set for base coats. Your base coats are done. Done, this is all you need. And best of all, you don't need a lot of storage space. All you need is a little tray. You just get a little Tupperware tray from Walmart or you got it in the kitchen or whatever. Put a little padding in the bottom, you know, paper towels, whatever. And just put your stuff there, man. And this is a tray. So if you don't have a lot of room, the kids like to invade your art area, you just pick up your tray and you just go and put it on top shelf somewhere, right? I mean, it's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. And um, that's, that's the good news as far as pastels go. It's not very expensive. What you're going to have is the additional cost is your paper, right? So I would recommend Velour. I like Velour. You can use Pastel Mat. I would go Pastel Mat or Velour. Let's show Pastel Mat on the screen. So I get mine at, again, Blick Art. And they'll show Velour. Now Velour comes in two types. You have the paper and you have the board. I would get the paper, it's cheaper, right? I mean, just get the paper and tape it onto a piece of cardboard. You're talking much cheaper to get the paper. Just get one piece. You can cut it into eighths. So one piece costs about $6. You're gonna get eight paintings out of it. They're not gonna be huge, but you're gonna get eight paintings about the size, right? So you can paint your neighbor's dog, your friend's dog, your neighbor's cat, friend's cat, whatever. Um, they do have animal specific sets. The two people that make these is Jackson's Art carries the Emma Colbert set. That's gonna run you about a hundred bucks. Um, but Unison is the brand and, and that is extremely high quality. The good part about Unison is they don't really add white to a lot of their pastel line. Instead, they'll keep the pure colors. So if you look online, the colors just jump out at you, man. Like, whoa, that is an amazing brown. That is an amazing tan or whatever. Um, highly recommend Unison. And you can get it from Jackson Art. I'll post on here a coupon where you can get 10% off Unison. Any set that you want, and the shipping is not that bad. Shipping is for the United States, the shipping is only like five bucks, right? Like five to seven bucks, depending on how much you load up. So it's really good, man. It's really cheap. Go to Blick, get your Great American. Blick, get your Mount Vision. If you wanted to go Unison, you get these same colors in Unison from Jackson's Art in the UK. Get it shipped to you for five to seven bucks. And use the 10% coupon. You're saving a lot. Unison's only like two $2.70 each. Under three bucks per? It's not a bad set. Or you can get the set. You can get the Emma Colbert set. Or you can get the set from Great American. So Great American set's a little more 
So again, these sets include a lot of colors that I don't have in mine. But again, I've done about a thousand paintings um, and I can make do with this. So I know some of you are asking like, well, what if I need that burnt sienna like this, but I need it much lighter? Okay, you get it and you lightly rub it. You don't push very hard and you get a really, really light burnt sienna. Or get your burnt sienna, you put it on, and then you glaze it with a little white pencil. Not you don't you don't mash with a white pencil really hard. You just want to glaze it just to get a little lighter with the pencil. Same thing with the black. You can do that. Um, you can do butterscotch. And you need to be a little more brown. Get your medium brown. Just kind of glaze it. So all you're doing by glazing is lightly pressing it, and the pastel dust will fall off a little bit at a time, and you'll get a nice effect. So that's really my overall summary of colors, right? What colors you need to do pets. Um, this is going to be your base coat and this is going to be your details. And other than this, you don't really need anything. You'll see me occasionally use a different color and that's just because I have the color.